what's going on tech heads, <laughs> YouTube people. I uh, am back once again trying to bring you guys just uh, a little bit of just again aggregated kind of information regarding the CPU situation which seems to be all the rage right now. Of course you guys remember again you know six months ago or however long ago it was when it was GPU news every day between you know AMD's Polaris coming out and Nvidia's Pascal um, and of course right now you know the CPU battle between Intel and AMD is really um, you know the flames are, are full the fire is huge and the competition um, is, is heating up even more so um, more news about that today and um, I gotta start off by saying that first of all I, uh, I know in a couple videos I mentioned the possibility of Coffee Lake going into Socket 1151 in a few videos I've mentioned, last video I think in fact I mentioned about CPUs that the uh, socket was essentially dead. I didn't think Intel um, was going to release anything more than a four core, eight thread part. I thought that the you know core um, i7 7700K, the KB Lake four core, eight thread part was really going to be the end of the line for that socket. And um, it turns out that's actually true and not true. So um, Intel has officially, finally given us some information regarding, you know, their plans um, for the mainstream consumer um, market slash socket 1151 and uh, the announcement that they're going to release Coffee Lake, uh, the eighth generation of um, Intel CPUs. Still on 14, still on 14 nanometer, uh, you know, manufacturing process, which they kind of seem to be stuck on, but um, yeah, they're going to be six core, 12 thread parts. Um, in the i7s, they will have a six core, uh, no hyper threading i5 model available, and I think they also will have, um, you know, obviously some lower end parts, an i5 that has four cores and eight threads. Uh, kind of like the previous i7s, uh, as well as, you know, some even lower-end i3 and Pentium models coming out uh, probably, you know, sometime early next year that are going to have dual-core um, with hyper-threading enabled. I don't really see the point of that. I know that they're going to try to get, you know, cost down and, and really have a low barrier to entry to get, you know, a, a new CPU. Um, but in 2018, I personally just don't see the point of um, really, in my opinion, stagnating, um, you know, developers in, in terms of them being able to, you know, create and optimize programs for more and more, you know, CPU resources, cores, threads, etc. Um, and I feel like Intel, by doing that, is really going, going to be holding back uh, the, the entire software development communi community. Um, but uh, that's all I'll say about that. But yeah, um, you know, these Coffee Lake CPUs uh, are going to be available on Socket 1151. Now, Intel is recommending that you have a, again, you know, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is why it was true and not true, is they want you to have a socket 1151 version 2 um, you know socket and probably is going to supply you know additional power for some uh, slightly more power hungry six core parts uh, they also are recommending that you have a uh, series 3 chipset uh, platform controller hub PCH whatever so um, they may wind up being compatible with uh, you know the H170Z um, uh, 170 and H you know 270 and Z270 motherboards um, and chipsets, but they may not. There's not really a guarantee there. Intel's yet to, yet to actually clarify that. Um, it may be possible. It may not. But once again, uh, you can see that Intel is just. You know, it's like they nickel and dime you. It's like every time you want to upgrade, even on the same socket, for God's sakes, you have to buy another motherboard 
um, with a new you know platform controller hub and this is really one of the advantages of AMD and you know integrating um, you know the memory controllers in their CPUs with 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 Ryzen with Threadripper with Epic um, they don't have to have you know an additional um, chip on the motherboard it's going to inflate cost it's going to use up more power on top of what the CPU is consuming so um, anyway you know I, I do think it's great news for um, you know consumers of Intel you know mainstream motherboards they're going to have at least a six core 12 thread option available to them um, you know the the, uh, the the boost frequencies and the base frequency frequencies look pretty good <clears throat> power consumption looks pretty good um, all in all I think these chips will do um, will do well um, to compete in the mainstream uh, at least better than Intel is doing right now you know with uh, you know they they only have out you know quad core eight thread parts and AMD's got obviously you know eight core 16 thread parts out there so they're just getting you know they're getting their asses handed to them in the, in the mainstream consumer, consumer market right now um, you know to combat that again they've added two more cores now they're not you know that far behind uh, just 25 percent in terms of core count <clears throat> and um, you know they've, they've upped their game in terms of the the cash uh, provided on these new 8 series chips um, they've gone um, up to I think it's uh, 1.5 megabytes of L2 cache kind of like they increase the uh, you know the cache the L2 cache on their uh, high-end desktop Skylake X parts um, which you know it's great you know to have more low latency cache is, is always a good thing so um, you're getting a little bit more L2 cache uh, up, up from one megabyte on the previous seventh generation you know processors on that platform um, L3 cache sees a boost the, uh, the core i5 series chips are going to have nine megabytes up from six uh, on the seven series processors and the uh, you know the i7s are going to have 12 megabytes L3 cache up from eight um, on the previous i7s like the 7700k so um, again yet to be determined whether they will be compatible if you already have a SOC 1151 motherboard whether it's you know like I say you know a one series chipset a two series chipset um, uh, whether or not they will work on those has yet to be seen but again Intel is recommending that you pair uh, these new Coffee Lake 8th generation CPUs you know Core i7, Core i5, i3, Pentiums, whatever um, pair those with a new socket 1151 version 2 socket and a uh, series 3 uh, PCH so um, you know we'll have to wait and see if Intel is able to provide compatibility with people that already have those boards or if you'll be forced once again to go out and buy yet another motherboard um, as a mainstream consumer I personally just wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be surprised in the least if uh, AMD, you know, as as Global Foundry's manufacturing process continues to get better and better, I wouldn't be surprised in the least to see them come out with, you know, uh, higher clocked six core, uh, you know, eight core parts, um, you know, even quad core parts in their mainstream R3, R5, R7 you know series of CPUs that work on AM4 um, in the near future and um, I'll have to wait and see about that but uh, this will certainly help Intel at least compete uh, better than they're doing now in the mainstream market and that's great news for everybody uh, because competition you know from Intel will drive AMD's prices down um, and vice versa so it's a really it's a win-win for everybody but um, uh, there's some other news here uh, it's all CPU related stuff um, Intel may be releasing and um, I don't know if it's confirmed yet or not but they have said that they're going to be releasing Coffee Lake uh, mobile CPUs and the information that I've seen so far on this looks kind of weird um, apparently these are going to run at only like 2 gigahertz um, but they will have 6 cores 
Um, I don't know if they'll be hyper-threaded yet or not, um, but it certainly, you know, is a bump up from a quad-core part. Um, and they will, they will apparently feature, you know, uh, Intel's new, you know, high-end integrated graphics solution, the, the, uh, the GT3e, which is going to include things like embedded DRAM, kind of like um, talked about in my last video, the PS2 had embedded DRAM, um, you know, the GameCube had a little bit of GPU, you know, memory cache right on the GPU, the Xbox One utilizes ES RAM. Uh, this is a technology that really was come up with by a company called BitBoys, like way back in the day. And they just said, hey, you know, forget having, you know, we have a lot of things that happen with graphics that, that are called upon um, all the time. You know, why not just have a chunk of memory that resides right next to the GPU? We don't have to go fetch it from the main VRAM. Um, it's essentially a GPU cache. So hopefully that will really help performance of uh, Intel's, you know, integrated graphic solutions on their mobile and on uh, their desktop, um, you know, CPUs, really, really APUs at this point. Um, and uh, more news, moving on to the high-end desktop scene. Some people are calling this now, you know, if you have over 12 cores, they're calling it like the super high-end desktop. It's like a whole new category of just like basically you're almost at like server level performance um, you know, in a consumer, uh, really, really targeted, uh, you know, product lineup from AMD and from Intel, but, um, no news on the Intel, uh, Skylake X or KB Lake X parts, uh, today, but, uh, word on the street is that, uh, AMD's, you know, new Threadripper CPUs coming out, I think it's the, uh, uh, 1920X and 1950X, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but um, they're coming out uh, on August 10th with price points of $799 for the 12-core, uh, 24-thread part. Um, I think it's a 1920X, which is an awesome, awesome value. Uh, and then the, the highest end, you know, a 1950X, the 16-core, 32-thread part, Will be coming in at under a thousand dollars, basically, basically a thousand dollars at nine hundred ninety-nine bucks. And um, even the chip, the nineteen twenty X, the twelve core, twenty-four thread part, um, for seven ninety-nine. They've shown videos already. I linked it in my last video of that CPU beating up on Intel's current, you know, uh, the highest part they currently have available, which I think is a seventy-nine hundred X. It's a 10 core, uh, 20 thread Skylake X part, you know, on socket 2066, X299, um, you know, their high end desktop platform. I don't expect again to see, you know, the remainder of that product, product stack. Uh, those products, you know, their 12 core, 14, 16, 18 core parts um, until later in the year, September, possibly uh, October. So AMD with these chips coming out on August 10th you know, uh, they're going to be wearing the performance crown straight up for at least a few months in the high-end desktop segment. Uh, and I'm not saying they're going to win every single benchmark. Intel does have, you know, uh, you know, single-threaded performance uh, where they're, they're boosting technology, depending on the CPU that you get, utilizing things like Turbo Boost 3.0 or Turbo Max, whatever they're calling it, 3.0, that boost, you know, high, high frequency on a single core, um, they're also, um, and even in these new Coffee Lake CPUs, they're able to do, you know, uh, really good uh, boosting. Uh, and of course, that is all regulated, I'm sure, you know, by, by, you know, by thermals, by, by load, etc. So, um, you know, keep in mind when you're looking at these spec sheets, you're looking at these, you know, these, these boost frequency, frequency numbers, and um, AMD doesn't really ever really even quote like they, they don't ever say uh, with their 1800x for example um, you know they say turbo frequency is 4 gigahertz they don't say on their spec sheets or at least I've never seen them say on a spec sheet anywhere um, you know they don't ever include XFR boost and say 4.1 gigahertz whereas Intel really is, is trying to just you know scream to consumers hey look um, it's not a guarantee you're, you're going to hit this clock speed, but it's possible. 
you know, and uh, AMD's spec sheets tend to be more realistic in my opinion. I think, uh, you know, you're seeing a lot more, you know, dirty tactics from Intel, especially, you know, they recently have just, you know, tried to trash, you know, AMD's epic CPU, um, uh, you know, s server CPUs and saying they were just, you know, basically, you know, four glued together desktop CPUs and uh, AMD has been pretty classy about it. They came back out and said, you know, um, these really, uh, you know, even though they are the same architecture, you know, again, they've built this, you know, Zen architecture, uh, which is a, which is a great architecture. You know, it's um, it's it's right there neck and neck in terms of uh, you know integer performance with Intel stuff. Uh, it's it's even more powerful in, in terms of floating point performance with with Intel's stuff clock for clock uh, right now and um, you know it's funny to me that Intel on one of their slides uh, they came out and they said um, uh, it was it was on one of the slides that they were trying to kind of bash AMD about the Epic server stuff and they said uh, they had a quote and it said something about um, you know, uh, an unoptimized ecosystem, unoptimized software. And they had a quote from a guy, uh, and some, some game developer, surely, that said, you know, um, uh, right now, games are not optimized for uh, AMD's Ryzen CPUs. And Intel was trying to say that'll be the same case in the server market, um, where, you know, right now, all the software that exists is optimized for Intel's CPUs, Intel's architecture, etc. cetera. Um, I think it's kind of funny and kind of ironic that if you think about it, Intel really is shooting themselves in the foot with that statement because what they're essentially saying, and this is completely true, what I've, what I've been saying now for months, is that the benchmarks being run today, uh, you know, I don't care if you're running these benchmarks on engineering samples of AMD's upcoming mobile CPUs, um, you know, versus Intel's upcoming mobile CPUs. I don't care if you're running these benchmarks on mainstream CPUs, upcoming, you know, or current from AMD uh, and Intel, a high-end desktop, super high-end desktop from either company, or in the server and data center, you know, market. Um, you know, the benchmarks being run today and the benchmarks being run for that matter for the next probably six months even further, um, these numbers are absolutely best case scenario for Intel. You know, as AMD continues to gain market share, and again, you guys have seen the numbers where they're just, they're, they're skyrocketing for AMD, and that's only having released, you know, the R5 and R7 series CPUs in the mainstream market, um, you know, of course, they've got, you know, the R3, you know, kind of uh, entry-level parts coming out for the mainstream here very soon. They've got the high-end desktop, super high-end desktop parts coming out. Uh, Epic has been released to the market, so you're going to have, you know, more and more market share taken away from Intel. And you're going to have, again, the software development community um, really begin to optimize, um, you know, for AMD's architectures and, the, and for their CPUs. So um, I think it's funny that, that, that they, you know, they tried to kind of throw that out there as, as saying, um, you know, as a negative for AMD, when in fact, if you think about it, it's a very positive thing. On top of the, uh, you know, the fact that, that, that even today, you know, price performance wise, um, in many applications, not all of them, but in many applications, um, is already, you know, hugely in favor of AMD in terms of performance per dollar, um, and that I, I think is only going to get, uh, to you know, a bigger and bigger gap in terms of performance per dollar um, as software optimization occurs. And um, I think it's funny as hell that Intel mentioned that as kind of a, uh, you know, a knock on AMD when in fact, um, you know, it's going to be a knock against them eventually. So um, one thing I mentioned uh, uh, was the, you know, uh, the, the, the arrival of these new uh, Threadripper CPUs coming out on August 10th. 
and um, they're, they're saying these are actually going to include, AMD's done it before, but they're, they're saying they're actually going to include um, liquid cooling solutions, which is awesome. Um, you know, I think it's cool that AMD right now even includes, you know, my CPU, the 1700, came with a, uh, a, a very, very, you know, uh, sufficient CPU cooler that has RGB lighting on it. Um, they include CPU coolers with a lot of their CPUs and, um, you know, to throw in an all-in-one cooling solution with their high-end desktop, super high-end desktop CPUs just adds even more value. I was building a, a PC where well, I sent a parts list uh, to somebody I work for um, for like a video um, rendering machine and it's not super high-end video editing or rendering um, we're talking about you know low resolution videos here and and not a lot of uh, overlays or anything like that whatsoever so um, I recommended to her the 1700 as a CPU um, even though the 1700 X is currently only $30 more you've got to buy your own CPU cooler for the 1700 X so uh, there's just a lot of situations where AMD um, is providing, you know, just more value to the to the consumer and um, making the total cost of ownership, you know, uh, lower uh, in the data center by being more efficient. And uh, anyway, I know this is just ramble session as usual, but um, a couple of things I wanted to point out here real quick is that uh, I saw a few months back. Um, you know, when, when they first started talking about Naples, uh, you know, AMD's now Epic CPUs and how they are going to have, you know, 32 cores, 64 threads, as we all know, it's basically, you know, four, uh, eight core Zeppelin dies kind of, you know, tied together using infinity fabric. And, um, they showed a slide, um, that said, you know, uh, and this is the same with all of AMD's roadmaps on mobile, mainstream, high-end desktop, and servers. You know, they've clearly stated, and I wish Intel would do this, uh, but I feel like Intel is more in a reactionary, you know, kind of situation right now, uh, kind of trying to react to what AMD is doing. But AMD has said, you know, we're going to keep putting out, um, you know, newer and better CPUs into these sockets that we're that we're putting in the market today so you can expect to see you know uh, zen 2 uh, architecture cpus zen 3 architecture cpus um, based on global foundries seven nanometer uh, fabrication manufacturing process which apparently is coming along very very well and um i think that that actually um you know, could point to potentially more cores and threads, obviously more efficiency in IPC, et cetera. Um, but that could kind of proliferate through the entire product stack um, from mobile all the way up, um, you know, to the server market. So um, I want to say that their Starship CPUs, which is the last name I heard of, you know, the seven nanometer CPUs coming out from AMD, um, you know, in, in 2018, I think they had, I want to say it was 48 cores or 56 cores or something like that. Um, but you've got to think, <clears throat> you know, the transition to 7 nanometer, and at this point, it looks like AMD is going to beat Intel um, to the, you know, to the, you know, in the race to get down um to a to a smaller fabrication process whether intel winds up using 10 nanometer um, or going to 7 nanometer again you know amd doesn't own um, their own fabrication their own manufacturing plants um, and there's just no way that intel is going to just you know close the doors to these multi-billion dollar fabrication pr plants that they own uh, to outsource manufacturing to somebody that may have already perfected, um, you know, a smaller 
um, smaller gate, smaller fabrication process like AMD can do using global foundries. Uh, if they want to use, you know, uh, uh, what is it, TSMC or whatever it is or whomever to make their chips, they can do that. Um, but you're, you're going to see, you know, obviously greater density at 7 nanometer. Um, you're going to get more transistors in the same surface area. Um, you know, you're going to get uh, gains in efficiency just, just because they don't have to travel as far. The electrons don't have to travel as far. There's less, there's less leakage. Um, you know, I think heat does become an issue when you're trying to dissipate, um, you know, all that activity from a smaller surface area um, can become challenging, but there are certainly ways to deal with that heat dissipation. Um, but again, what we may see is when this transition to 7 nanometer occurs, um, you may not only see additional cores and threads available to AMD's you know, highest end server CPUs, but you may also see them um, affecting you know, mobile. You may, you may see them affecting mainstream and, and you know, high-end desktop, super high-end desktop CPUs where they're just able to pack more cores and more threads um, on an even better architecture um, than they have now uh, into the same motherboards that we're buying today. So I think that's awesome. And, um, you know, again, I think, I think this is all good stuff. I think that Intel, you know, whether it's reactionary or whether it was planned and they just didn't feel like releasing a roadmap for some random reason, um, I think it's great that they are coming back, you know, with their eighth generation, you know, Coffee Lake CPUs coming out um, on on a mainstream desktop, uh, you know, platform, SOC 1151 version two series three chipsets. If that's what it takes, at least they'll have something um, that's more competitive in the market today than what they're currently offering, um, you know, a SOC 1151 you know, two series chipsets, you know, quad core chips, and um, those just aren't really cutting it, especially for the future, um, and especially considering the fact that Intel is correct, uh, none of this software is currently optimized for AMD, and it's going to be. So um, that's a wrap uh, for today. Ladies and gentlemen, hope that you have enjoyed this uh, relatively short video, and um, if not, hit the thumbs down button, tell me I suck. I can take you know uh, criticism if it's if it's a, you know constructive, or if it just is blatantly evil. That's cool too. Go ahead and uh, troll all over the place. Have a great have a great time. But um, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. If you really like it, you want to hear more of this stuff, hit the sub button. That would be great. And um, you know, hope you guys are all doing amazing out there. Hope you're all you know in good health and good spirits and uh, and doing well in your lives. I appreciate you tuning in as always. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.